Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct views. It has been to get this show set up today. Every possible technical glitch should possibly befall a man. That has befallen me, but you know what? We have, um, I want to give a shout out. Everything I tell you. I want to give a shout out to everyone who's been hitting share and like and following these Fukushima updates. For those of you that are new to it, one of my New Year's resolutions is to start each Fukushima update this way. If you are familiar with what Fukushima is, don't worry, it lasts a minute. In 2011, unfortunately, a nuclear meltdown, you know what that is, when the uh, we all know what a nuclear meltdown is. When, it, when the reactor gets so hot that there's almost no containment for it. We have had a melt through when it goes through the containment vessel. And we have had a melt out, which is a nightmare that's not normally talked about. A uh, melt out is uh, when the core, for whatever reason, in this case, it explodes and goes all over. There's like a black goo residue all over the... Uh, the Tokyo and the surrounding areas. Well, that's why. Well, that, why does it matter? Cancers, heart disease, Lou Gehrig's disease. Shuts your immune system down so you get every disease that comes down the pipe. People say, oh, well, I'm not afraid to die. I don't need to listen to Sam show. Let me tell you something. It's not that you're going to die. It takes a very long time for you to die of this. It matters because it's going to sicken your life and cheapen your life. And there are things you can do. I mean, uh, we've covered it before. I'm not going to go over all of it again, but... For one thing, try to hit 3,000 uh, milligrams of vitamin C a day. Washington's blog, no, it does not cure radioactive harm, but it prevents some of it. Declassified U.S. government report prepared a week after Fukushima accident. 100%, that is all for you Usher fans, 100% of the total spent fuel was released to the atmosphere from Unit 4. Um, and there were four reactors that went red at Fukushima. Again, welcome aboard, new listeners. Um, when this happened, we don't know to what degree it happened. We know that it's been hidden from us. And uh, a good example of the differences that we've seen in other nuclear issues versus this one. We can go real quick. Um, Winsdale, uh, Britain, when uh, their nuclear weapons factory melted down, they immediately stopped milk consumption in the area. They've done no such thing in Fukushima. And this is infinitely worse. Uh, we've covered on here where major physicists have said that it would actually have been better if a small nuclear exchange had happened in terms of mass fallout. Now, I don't mean it'd be better if the town got bombed. I mean in pure numbers. What I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not nuts, but what I'm saying is that it would have been healthier for the environment as a whole to have had a small limited nuclear exchange than to have this happen in Fukushima. It is that bad. It is really that bad. Washington's blog. We reported in 11 that the International Atomic Energy Agency knew within weeks, there's a link right there on FactCam, that Fukushima had melted down but failed and refused to tell the public. The same year, we reported in 11 that the U.S. knew within days that the Fukushima accident had had a full-blown meltdown. Well, I hate when they write stuff twice. The fuel pools and rods at Fukushima appear to have boiled caught fire and or exploded soon after an earthquake knocked out power systems. And there's uh, five links right here, right? Screw the article. Five freaking links right there. There you go. You know, me, Sam's making it up, right? Sam's crazy. No, I'm not crazy. Um, my issue here is that I don't think a lot of people understand the sense. Boiling nuclear fuel, water on it, releases steam into the air. Obviously, you boil an egg, you know, you know um, what's it do? In England, they like that, hey, you don't tell you exactly what it does. Um, steam goes in the air. 
Well, uh, Dana, we'll cover him in a minute on the Dumby of the day. No, he's not the one who gets the Dumby. He's the one who found the story for the people that I'm giving the Dumby to. Uh, beautiful girl, Dana. Um, he said that you could put radionucleides in battery acid if you wanted to. And in millions of years when the battery acid broke down, you would still have plutonium in here. You can't get rid of this stuff. If you ingest it into your body and they bury you, if somebody digs you up in 500 years, your skeleton would still be just as radioactive as it was when they put you into the ground. Well, that's what happened. It boiled, caught fire, and exploded. Well, now classified, declassified report written by the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission on March 18, 2011, one week after the tidal wave hit Fukushima, quote, is uh, the source term provided to NARAC was 125% of the total fuel in Unit 2 released to the atmosphere, too. 50% of the total spent fuel from Unit 3 was released into the atmosphere, and 3 100% of the total spent fuel was released to the atmosphere from Unit 4. Do you have any idea what that means? It means that the fuel pools, now please, please listen to this. Please. The fuel pools at Unit 3 and 4, that's two different nuclear station power, uh, two different core, uh, reactors at one station, contained enormous, enormous amounts of radiation. For example, there was more cesium in that Unit 4 fuel pool than in all of the 800 nuclear bombs exploded above ground. If you want to know why that matters, go ahead and look up what cancer rates have done since the invention of nuclear bomb testing, okay? Go ahead and take a really, really good look at what that does, and you'll be terrified. I promise you, you'll be absolutely mortified. And we're talking about this is more radiation than all 800. It's washing over the west coast of uh, the United States. I've been reporting on it and begging everybody to get out of that area. Well, again, now we know it's doing even worse in Canada, up on their coast. It's, it's dreadful. And why are we doing it? For global warming, right? Study. This is Breitbart. NOAA overstated U.S. warming by 50%. So we've got 25% of Unit 2 in the air. We've got... 50% of Unit 3 and all of Unit 4. This is supposed to help global warming. Now, I, I do not believe in global warming, and I've gone over why for a million times. You're better off believing in Santa Claus. It's not happening. However, even if it was, global warming has not killed as many people as Chernobyl. Fukushima, Three Mile Island have. It's true. And they're going to say, well, you know, only 9,000 people are thought to have died from Chernobyl. Let me just give you one little hint as to how they do that here. If you wonder what I'm doing, I burnt my mouth horrible earlier, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uglier than normal. I feel like uh, Steven Tyler. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. If we don't laugh, we die, right? Um, my problem here is there nuclear is not the answer to global warming, even if it was happening, which it's not. It's not the answer to it. I promise you it's not. Like Einstein said, uh, nuclear fission is one hell of a way to boil water. What they do to hide the cancer rates is they say, well, you know, he got cancer and you know, it's a high rate of cancer in this area. It could be caused by a number of things. Perhaps they're near a coal plant. Perhaps they're, okay, all of this matters. All of that makes it worse. But you can find genetic science linked directly to the amount of radiation that was given off in Chernobyl 
for the birth defects that you see in Belarus. If you, who am I? You don't believe me? Who am I? Okay, do me this favor then, if you would. Go ahead and look up Dr. Chris Busby. He's a physicist. Look up, uh, maybe look up Arnie Gunderson. Okay, I'm not a greenie. You want to know who believes in global warming? Helen Caldicott believes in global warming. Let me ask you if uh, Helen Caldicott wants to solve global warming, which she believes in, with nuclear power plants, because she doesn't. You can look it up. It was being facetious. I know she doesn't. Um, another week, another study showing that our official climate data keepers have been exaggerating the extent of global warming to make it look more scary, more urgent, more desperately in need of extra funding for our official climate data keepers. This one, co-authored by meteorologist Anthony Watts of Watts Off With That Fame, shows that at least half of the global warming in the U.S. since 1979 has been, wait for it, fabricated by NOAA. There's links on FactCam for those of you that will inevitably doubt me. While satellite records show no global warming in the last 18 years, the land-based data sets like the ones maintained by NOAA for the U.S. Historical Climate Network continue to show a warming trend. One reason for this discrepancy, the study suggests, is that NOAA has been cherry-picking its raw data. That is, it has ignored the evidence from those weather stations showing little or late 20th century warming, and instead placed undue emphasis on the ones that do show warming. That would imply that certain areas get warm at certain times. They're making it look like everything's getting warming and everything is warming all the time, which is not true. The ones that do show warming also happen to be the least trustworthy. These are the ones, the study shows, which have been most corrupted by the urban heat island effect and other environmental factors. For example, some have been surrounded by buildings or roads built next to them since they were first sighted. Others have had airports vastly expand next door to them. What this inevitably means is that their more recent temperature measurements have been running hot. They have been distorted by factors which have nothing to do with weather or climate. See how they do that to get into your pocket? Oh, it's not the, it's not the airplanes. No, no, we just sat the, the, the monitor system right by the airport. Brazenly, it says, yet these are the ones that NOAA has been using as the basis for its claims about global warming in the U.S. If, however, you look at those weather stations that have been corrupted, unperturbed stations, what you get is global warming roughly half as much as NOAA claims. Whether this represents more incompetence or a calculated fraud by NOAA is for future courts to decide. What we do know is that the problem dates back to at least the 1990s. Well, imagine that, when some, for unexplained reasons, Noah decided to have the number of weather stations used for its, official, for its official records. Well, I wonder why. Even more mysteriously, the ones it chose to keep tended to show more global warming, while the ones it rejected tended to show less. It must be emphasized that the perturbed stations dropped from the USHCN set show significantly lower trends than those retained in the sample, both for well and poorly sighted set station sets. Perhaps it says we should be generous to know and put their decision to favor compromised weather stations over accurate ones down to a spectacular stupidity and incompetence. Then again, let's not forget NOAA in in common with friends such as NASA and Geis, I've come over this, has long been in the hands of fervent climate alarmists with a point to prove. For them, it is an article of faith that the planet must be warming dramatically in the last 30 or so years, because if it wasn't, then bang goes their theory that man-made carbon dioxide emissions are inexorably and cast catastrophically driving up the world's temperatures. And if the real world evidence doesn't point the way they want, well, hell, then maybe it needs to tutoring till it does point the right way. Um, 
And of course, wouldn't you know, they get taxpayer money. So what, what I'm showing you is another example that man is not warming the planet, but you are getting nuclear power plants. You are getting breast cancer. You are getting heart disease. You're getting all kinds of gifts from the nuclear industry based on something that no science says is even reliable. It looks like that camera keeps going dark and light. If it does, I'm so sorry to you guys, but at least you can see the back cam. Friends, we've got more stories to get to. This isn't so much Fukushima related here as it is globally. There's a lot of really creepy, scary things going on globally regarding all things nuke. Are you hearing me? I just want to remind everybody, we are on Twitter, as you can see there. Nobody else is on Twitter. Nobody's ever on Twitter. I think I'm the only person on Twitter. But if you want to find me on there, you can. Um, I got the Media Speaks logo on that. Also, if you want, uh, make sure you look up the work of uh, Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself on the Media Speaks. I also want to give a shout out to Change Transportation. If you're within about a 50 mile radius of Canton, Ohio, say, hey, Kenny, I heard about you from the correct views. It's going to give you a hell of a discount for when you do. All right, friends, I'm going to move on to this from Fox News. A new Iran sanctions fight looms in 2016. This is one of the instances where I part ways with some of the uh, more libertarian minded people. This is where Libertarians tend to say that uh, what you do affects you and not anybody else. Okay, fine. That applies to just about everything. It does not apply to nuclear power plants. Why? Does it apply to meth labs? Would you like your duplex neighbor to have a meth lab? You know, it has fumes and it's highly combustible. And you might just blow up worse than Jeb's Bush. Jeb Bush's run for the White House. But why not? No, because that affects someone else. When this damn thing melts down, it's going to affect everyone globally, but certainly in the Middle East, depending on exactly how bad the meltdown is. So other countries have them, Sam. Why can't Iran? Even if Iran didn't threaten its neighbors, which we're going to be uh, talking about in a second, even if they were run by the nicest people that ever lived, and even if them and the Jews got along wonderfully, and there was no issue at all, we have a problem here. The same doctors and scientists and geologists that warned us that we were going to see a catastrophic earthquake in Japan are the same ones now who are warning us that that same data set that, that, that triggered them believing this the first time is now being seen in Iran. Therefore, regardless of any political turmoil, regardless of any Jews, regardless of any Islamists, regardless of the fact that Iran wants to use them against just about everybody in the world, if none of that was true, you would still have the exact same issue dealing with the coming earthquake. And it wouldn't be a real wise idea to ignore the same scientists that you ignored the last time you had a quadruple meltdown, melt out, and melt through. Despite President Obama's nuclear deal with Iran that provides a gradual easing of decades of crippling economic sanctions, senators are fighting to renew a vital law that would preserve the sanctions option should Iran renege on its end of the bargain. And this is one of the things Trump's right about. They get like a 24-28 a, a day notice before they can be inspected. They get... Um, to know which parts are going to be inspected <laughs> and for what reason. They get everything. And what did we get in the deal? We got an aggressive country that now has a way to be more aggressive. And we can't even put sanctions back in place if they do, in fact, become aggressive. The Hill reports that senators plan to move soon on a proposal to extend what's known as the Iran Sanctions Act, which is set to expire next year. It's a dreadful idea. Senator Ben Cardin, Democrat Maryland, top Democrat of the Foreign Relations Committee, one of the only Democrats I've heard say something smart in months, told the newspaper his, newspaper, his colleagues have 
floated the possibility of tackling the issue in January or February. How very white of you. Meanwhile, they talk about this as if it was a political matter. It is not a political matter. It is a matter of geological fact that you're going to melt the plant down and do more harm to the Middle East than a million angry Jews and a million angry Arabs could ever do to each other if they had arms full of Kalishnikovs. Listen to this, RT. Iran denies it fired rockets near U.S. aircraft carrier in the Gulf. Brands claim psychological warfare. I think it's pretty easy to tell whether or not this was done. Nobody launches missiles. It's international waters, by the way. We're allowed to be there. Nobody lies about missile launches. Many people see them. They see them go up. They have ways to check them on satellites. So don't tell me it's not confirmed. Second of all, this is more showboating. More signs that the politicians uh, like Rand and uh, Ron Paul and Trump to a large degree saying that we don't get any respect in the world. Well, listen to this. Tehran has officially denied its Revolutionary Guards patrol vessel launched rockets in eminent proximity of the USS Harry S. Truman and its convoy entering the Persian Gulf, calling the allegation of active psychological warfare. Now, I don't trust President Obama, but I'm sorry. I don't think you're going to get an entire... an entire carrier... a patrol vessel, excuse me. You're not going to get an entire boat full of soldiers, I should say, to lie about this. There was either a rocket that went up or not. The data on rockets going up in these waters are monitored, obviously, nonstop. On Tuesday, reports emerged that last Saturday the U.S. aircraft carrier was intimidated after missiles were launched by an Iranian patrol vessel on a parallel course with the American naval convoy. Provocative. The naval forces of the guards have not had any exercises in the Strait of Hormuz, no, during the past week, and the period claimed by the Americans for them to have launched missiles and rockets, wrote as quoted the Revolutionary Guard spokesman Ramazan Sharif as saying, the, the Honorable Sharif, I'm sure, I wonder how many people he beheaded this week. The alleged dangerous missile launch was reported by NBC News, which cited two unnamed U.S. military officials as saying the USS Harry S. Truman was about 1,400 meters away from Iranian vessels, which launched two missiles as part of naval exercises. You know what? This is not a country that I think is heading in the direction of great and peace uh, and love and friendship. This is, uh, Michael Savage mentioned this uh, many years ago. We all know what horrible things ancient Persia did. Well, Iran and Iraq used to be Persia, and then being uh, divided within their own religion to such a degree, and with such vehement hatred, it has kept Persia apart. Now that Iraq has fallen and Iran is absorbing it, what you're getting is another Persia. And what you're getting is the same evil that you had in Persia. Slashgear.com, this was the worst news. Your next flight might include a mandatory trip through the body scanner. Let them try it. I won't hurt anybody, I won't fight anybody, I won't break any rules, I won't do anything that would get me banned. Nothing like that, so don't try to bend and twist my words. But, no, no, you can pat me down. No, these are cancer machines. Do you understand me? These are not radiation machines, these are cancer machines. First of all, there is no safe dose of radiation. Second of all, it is not comparable to the flight itself, and even if it was, why would you double dose yourself? And second of all, it's a different kind of radiation. And four, who do you even know that calibrated this? Your next flight might include a mandatory trip through the body scanner, even though we saw TSA agents getting cancer at unbelievably high rates the last time. With the U.S. government quietly changing the opt-out rules for searches, in a document published earlier this month, the Department of Homeland Security outlined an update for the advanced imagery technology protocols used by the TSA. They're trying to make it mandatory to go through these backscatter radiation machines. And guess what? They are being sued, and I'm glad they're being sued. This is, look at this, 177 likes, ENC. Oh, fuck no, these machines are dangerous to your health. None of them are safe. 
There's a reason that's the highest rated comment. Because people like me are out here warning other people. People like you, you know what you're doing? You're hitting share. Really, I did all this work for you. Do me a favor. Hit the share button. Hit the subscribe button. Tell people to listen to it. If they hate me, then tell them to look at the sources. They're all on the screen. This isn't imaginary. This isn't something I'm doing because I don't have anything better to do. I just set the whole thing up myself today. Christelle isn't even in the studio. It wasn't an easy task. It wasn't an easy task to grab all these stories. You know what? It's worth it. So share it. It's important. It's going to be important to you the next time you get fly. Next time you fly. Another thing, how do they know how many x-rays you've already had? Some people with cancer and that can't take any more damn radiation. Oh, through the machine. Ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, freaking Putin, Vladimir Putin, RT. Hopefully, no nukes will be needed against ISIS, says Putin. All right. So ISIS is taking over innocent villages. And Putin, yeah, hopefully, we don't nuke them. What the hell is wrong with you people that love Putin so damn much? He's a one world order KBG cast off. No, I don't like Obama. No, I don't like Bush. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm telling you I also don't like Putin. Okay, what if, what if, uh, oh God. What if President Bush had said, hopefully we won't have to use any nukes in Iraq? Everybody would have been justifiably furious. Well, listen to this. Vladimir Putin, who for some reason all of you love, has praised the Russian cruise missiles fired against terrorists in Syria from the sea. He expressed hope that these weapons would not have to be armed with nuclear warheads. All that work and that camera died anyway. Meeting in the Kremlin with Defense Minister Sergei Shigu who reported the latest results of the anti-Islamic state ops in Syria. The Russian president made a notable remark. Notable. I have another word for it, but we'll go with notable. We must analyze everything on the battlefield, how the weapons operate, the uh, Calibra, so that's the sea-based cruise missiles, and the KH-108, which is the airborne cruise missiles, have proved to be modern and highly effective, and now we know it for sure. Precision weapons that can be equipped with both conventional and special warheads, which are nuclear, Putin said. Naturally, this is not necessary when fighting terrorists, and I hope will never be needed. So does he mean never needed again? Too. It's never needed. You know what? Obama has been egging on Putin, and Putin has been egging on Obama. Did you understand Putin? I don't like Obama, but this was wrong. Okay, this is still wrong. Putin called Obama on the 4th of July and, you know, congratulated him on the holiday and then promptly sent his warships into our waters. So, damn near could have started a nuclear war. I uh, sent planes into our skies, I want to say the same day. This man is not a friend of peace. I'm just looking a lot from RT odd. Uh, Kim Jong-un says North Korea has the hydrogen bomb becomes a powerful nuclear state. How is it that after we had 9-11, everybody in this country suddenly wanted to become Islamic? That made no sense to me. How is it after Fukushima, everybody now wants everything nuclear? Why, if I punch you in the face, do you suddenly now want to take uh, self-abuse lessons? You start flogging yourself. All right? and what the hell? North Korea has now developed a hydrogen bomb and can use it along with nuclear warheads to defend sovereignty, the country's central news agency has reported. Obviously too stupid to realize that the major threat in terms of, uh, in order for North Korea to shut down South Korea, they would have to nuke Seoul, Korea. Well, right here is Seoul. Right here, over here. Pyongyang, Pyongyang. Now, if if North Korea could nuke way over here and hurt South Korea, while a dreadful idea, you would be able to listen to the man talk and not think he's an idiot. But we're in the country, you can see Seoul from your capital. And then guess what you can't do? 
You're going to nuke you. Dummy! We managed to become a great nuclear power capable of defending the independence <coughs> and national dignity of our homeland by mighty nuclear and hydrogen strikes. Leader Kim Jong-un was quoted as saying by the Central News Agency. He also said North Korea has to continue with actively developing its military industry. Yeah, so it can bomb its own backyard. The statement came as Kim Jong-un was on a tour inspecting an upgraded arms plant in Pyongyang on Thursday, according to TASS, quoting the North Korean Central News Agency. So far, it has not been confirmed that the country has, in fact, designed and created a hydrogen bomb. Indeed, the South Korean intelligence community and experts say North Korea is unlikely to have enough scientific know-how to design the H-bomb. They said that about the other nuke bomb they had, and guess what? They had it. We don't have any information that North Korea has developed an H-bomb. No, of course not. No, no, it just blew up the other. I mean, it's, it's not that far of a jump. It said it's hard to regard North Korea as possessing an H-bomb. I think it seems to be developing it. Um, this was from the Seoul Based Science and Technology Policy Institute, Lee Chung Gwen. On February 10th of 05, of course, North, of course, North Korea declared that it had created nuclear weapons. The announcement was widely condemned by the international community. The country has just conducted underground nuclear tests three times, 06, 09, and 13. The trouble is there isn't anybody for them to use them against without being absolutely annihilated. The, the major difference here, of course, hydrogen. The hydrogen bomb is a nuclear weapon of mass destruction that uses energy from the primary nuclear blast, which they were already able to do, to ignite a secondary nuclear fusion. And it is by far the most powerful weapon on Earth. The first country to build a H-bomb was the Soviet Union, whose AN-602 hydrogen bomb, often referred to as the Tsar bomb, was tested in 1961. Have a look at this. It's a minute and 14 seconds. Yeah, that that bad boy right there. I'm not going to watch the whole thing, but you get the point. That, I'm going to go to another side of the explosion. Look at that. Just literally... That is an explosion the size of a city. That mushroom cloud is unspeakably large. And that's what we're talking about here. Plain and simple. Look at that. Yeah, that's a great idea, Kim Jong-un. Thanks. All right, and that brings us to... The Dumpty, but the dumpty of the day is in fact alive and well here on the fukushima update health canada thinks the tritium is vitamin water now there's a two-hour special here from uh, dana dunford dr and frd but look at this Tritium, 7,000. It's listed as a vitamin. Now, if you don't know what tritium is, tritium, according to Wikipedia, is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. It is not a vitamin. Vitamin. And if I send dunce caps to other countries, I wish I could afford to do it. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards things like this. I would mail it to Canada. Tritium is a vitamin, like Hitler was a humanitarian. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. Sam I. B. DeGangie, done with your massive Fukushima update. Hit share, hit subscribe. Let me know you liked it. Um, also, if you can uh, remember, Look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, all of his work, cutting edge writing, poetry, you name it, he does it, and uh, you're going to want to check it out. Good night, friends. Thank you for listening, and as always, God bless.